And we're continuing our conversation with Frank Ferrante, subject of the great documentary "May I Be Frank," a film about sex, drugs, and transformation. And Greg Marks, who is the filmmaker behind "May I Be Frank," and let's talk about the unconventional way that you're getting this movie out there. Sure, yeah, it's a story we love sharing. Um, well, I think we started off, you know, again, this is my first full 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 length film. Um, and even though I'm familiar with the industry part, you know, it is my first film. And the, and the guys had never made a film either. So I think that we were wanting to f to initially follow the model that everyone else used, you know. Um, and then as we did that, you know, for the past year we've been exploring distribution and, um, you know, different festivals. And, and um, you know, we weren't getting much of a response for whatever reason. And, we you know, we, we try not to take it personally, but the festivals were turning us down. Distributors were were sending us very tar terrible models back, you know, where basically we would, you know, make pennies on the dollar. And um, what didn't make sense to us is that whenever we did a private screening, we would sell out the theater. People would rave about the film and want to do a Q. You know, they'd stay for an hour after a Q and A, and we thought, you know, there's something missing here. We we've been doing this for a year trying to get this in the for whatever the in the industry is not responding so why don't we just take it into our own hands and um, you know we made the film in a grassroots way why not just do grassroots with the tour so we got so many requests on facebook after the people seeing the trailer to bring it all around the country that we literally started calling the people that sent out the request asked them if they wanted to be a host of a screening um, of course, in their excitement, they were absolute yes, and we supported them in hosting a screening in which, um, and because of that model, um, having a local host and having a team of people in that city that know the demographic and are excited about this movement, uh, we've sold out every screening that we've done um, in, the, in the past year, which were, you know, we were very under the radar, but now we're full scale, and it's amazing how this model is working, and as filmmakers... Um, you know, we're taking about 80% profit away from the screenings and merchandise sales, whereas if we had other organizations involved, we'd be taking about 25 to 30% away. And for an indie filmmaker who, you know, already, you know, anyone who makes an indie film already knows that unless you're Michael Moore, you know, it's you're not going to make millions and millions and millions if you have distribution and all that stuff. Um, so... So for us, this model really works because, you know, even though things are kind of taking off in that in that direction where it looks like things might be going to that level of success, but um, but it feels good to know that the, the people want the film, they're responding, and we get to keep 80% of the money because, after all, we did put our blood, sweat, and tears into this, you know. Right, and so then that, in turn, allows you to do all of this traveling. Right. And taking the time off. Yeah, for... the model we have right now is amazing because in this, well, it works with this particular film because the film is about transformation. And when people are done watching it, the first thing they want to know is where can I find these doctors? Where can I find this type of food mm. and spiritual practice? And so what we've been doing with the new model is we actually gather about 10 sponsors in that city. They pay a sponsorship fee to be part of the event, which pays for our expenses. And then we and, and, and we and the host will split ticket prices. So the host is happy. They're excited about it. We're empowering them to step into something new. The audience is supported by the sponsors. They get to see who's in the community. And the sponsors get new clients. So everyone is taken care of. And it allows us, yes, it allows us to sustainably go from city to city, spreading the message, transforming lives, being transformed in the process, and just knowing that we're sort of being part of this new sacred commerce movement mm -hmm. where, you know, where there is a such thing as making a profitable, sustainable living while making sure that everyone involved is taken care of and no one gets slighted in any way. And the whole anyway. process is healthy for it's once. It's holistic and it's healthy. Exactly. And it's starting to prove itself across the country in many different venues that it is possible and even some corporations are starting to latch on to this model of wow, we can still make billions of dollars and no one has to suffer in the process. The other thing I love about this, Frank, is <laughs> as I'm wearing my Revolution <laughs> t-shirt, the thing I love about it is it's you're not just going to cities like San Francisco, Boston, New York. You are getting out of the bubble and proving that there is a strong desire 
for information like this. <clears throat> um, yeah, and uh, I, I, our first, uh, our first venture into the Midwest uh, when I first heard about it, I was I was apprehensive about it because of my hubris. Being from New York, I thought it was New York, Los Angeles, and not much in between. And um, and uh, I was I was mistaken. I was I was really mistaken. I I was they are they are among our most ardent supporters and fans. Mm -hmm. Uh, we continue to get emails from the Midwest long after we've been gone. We've been called back to Kansas City three, was it four times. Four times, yeah. We, then we just came back from Des Moines. Uh, not exactly what I would have considered a destination spot. Um, not that there's anything wrong with it. I mean, it just wasn't on my radar. Right. I mean, I don't, I've never even been to Iowa. And so when we went, we sold out the house both times. And and what people are yearning for is the availability of organic foods and and um, um, and 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 healthy and, and healthy lifestyles. They they just don't have it. I mean, yeah. people in San Francisco or Los Angeles or New York don't really get how uh, how much how the um, the abundance, the availability of all the, the healthy foods and resources that we have. I mean, at any given time, you you, know, you spit in the wind here and you hit a farmer's market. Yeah. And, and, and they're organic food. And over in, the, I believe it was Des Moines, somebody was complaining that they have a farmer's market, but they're sort of under, under, um, uh, underwritten, underwritten by corporate yeah. farmers. Mm -hmm. And they don't really have organic food at the yeah. farmer's market. You know, we're here at Fort Mason or wherever, you know, in, in San Anselmo and Fairfax, there's all of these... All of these farmers' markets. Anyway, so so it's opening up a dialogue. Yeah, it really is. And you know, and the market responds. The market will respond to it. Um, yeah. So I I uh, I'm really I I love the Midwest. No, I think it's great because a lot of authors, filmmakers, they skip over that part of the country. Frankly, when they go on their book tour, I mean, money can be an issue, but they don't go to some of these. But places. that's the amazing thing is that the money is there. Mm. It's just that I think that, yeah, they overlook it. They don't right. think it's possible. Or, you know, PR stats say that it's not profitable. Or the me national media right. tell us right. that it's a, we live in this red-blue world, right. a country, which is right. completely manufactured. But I'll tell you why, and this is something we've found out, and that is we haven't, number one, spent a dime on advertising. And there's a reason, um, and it's not because we're cheap. It's just because we realize that the most powerful tool and having people invest in whether you have a product or a film or whatever it is you're doing is they want to relate to you. They so we're using Facebook and Twitter and email. We're relating with people one on one and the most of the PR groups out there in the industry what they want, what they do instead is they'll spend millions of dollars on advertising to win over the loyalty or the investment of the people in their product or their project. And that's why a lot of uh, small films or small projects get overlooked because the company's like, I'm not going to spend a million dollars to promote this in the Midwest because there's not that many people that are going to come out. However, um, there's no need to spend millions of dollars. With the technology we have today and the social networking we have today, it's easy to find these people that want these things. And now there's, a, there's new models emerging where the, what you put into it and what you get out of it is now shifting. And you don't have to spend millions of dollars to make millions of dollars anymore. So it's revolutionizing, and I think it's making a lot of small businesses and filmmakers have a new outlook and a new excitement. And you know, for for us, this new market is exciting because not only is it shown that we could bring this all over the country, but for me, it's just restored my faith in humanity in this country that there actually is a desire and need for change, transformation. And people really do want to have great lives. They really do. We're going to go to uh, our third part. That is Greg Marks. He's the filmmaker uh, behind the incredible documentary, May I Be Frank? And Frank Ferrante is the subject of this documentary. And in our third section, we'll talk about some of the more powerful moments that they've had while on their road trips. <laughs> 